again. Uh, so, so as I was saying, uh, Pro Tools was DigiDesign, made by DigiDesign back in like the 80s, like 88, something like that. It was bought out by um, Avid at some point. Avid makes movie stuff. And the reason why they bought it was because it's what everybody was using in the movie industry was Pro Tools. So they just went ahead and were like, yeah, yeah we're just going to go ahead and buy that. So they did. And um, it was it was cool back then. I mean, obviously, it was it was pushing the boundaries of what you could do. But I, when it was made in 1988, it was like still super slow. And it was everything. Nothing was real time back then. What I mean by real time is there's like real time and there's like kind of uh, offline. Offline does everything uh, faster than real time. And then real time only works in real time. So you can't go any faster than real time. So for example, it, nowadays, if you're bouncing a song down to listen to it, what that means by bouncing is it means I'm taking the song and I'm turning it into a, a two channel thing so people can listen to it on iTunes or whatever. We can do that offline and it will go faster than real time. We don't have to listen to it in real time. But back when they first started Pro Tools, <clears throat> it was only real time. And it was kind of like that for a while. And the, the plugins, though, were not real time. They were what we call audio suite plugins. So if I wanted to add an EQ to something, this is back in the 80s, if I wanted to add EQ to something, I would have to add the EQ to it and then hit go and it would render that. And then I would listen to it and it was a whole thing. You could only add one effect at a time. So when it first came out, it was really, really old and slow and, and, and gross. But it was still recording music onto a computer, which was pretty cool. So <clears throat> as we went, got into the 90s, in the early 90s, uh, at Pro Tools became better. They added this thing called uh, Real-Time Audio Suite Processing, RTAS, Real-Time Audio Suite Processing. And what that meant was that that was more like what you can do today. I, could, I had a track and I could put some effects on there and I could say, let's have an EQ and a compressor and a this and a that, and I could do it all and I could listen to it immediately. And that's really what made Pro Tools uh, become more popular. They also opened up the program so other companies could make plugins. Now the plugin is what goes inside of Pro Tools and uh, adds effects or instruments and stuff like that. Back then it wasn't instruments, it was just effects. But then you could have like a compressor, you could have an EQ made by another company. So DigiDesign, the company at the time, could focus on making Pro Tools and then other companies like Waves or IK Multimedia or, or Native Instruments, stuff like that, they could work on making EQs and compressors and things like that. So <clears throat> much, uh, much, much, much better of a way to work. And it opened up the doorway. It just kind of slammed open the doors. And then what happened was other companies kind of got on that same bandwagon, like Logic and uh, Cubase, started adding in audio editing capabilities in there as well. What a lot of people don't know is that um, Logic and Cubase come from MIDI only, whereas Pro Tools comes from audio only. And they each now have MIDI stuff in there. So now they can, all of them can, you can produce music, you can make your beats in there, you can record bands, all that stuff with all of them. But Logic and Cubase come from the production side, like using synthesizers and stuff, whereas Pro Tools comes from the audio editing side. So that's why, in my opinion, Pro Tools is the kind of easiest to use for audio editing. Now, obviously, that's my opinion. But as we go through Pro Tools, as we use it more and more and more, you're going to see why I say that. Okay, so when we're talking about Pro Tools systems, we're talking about a couple different things. There's the native system and there's the TDM or HD, or these days it's called Ultra. Now it's called Pro Tools Ultra. You're still going to have people say Pro Tools HD, and you may even have some people talk about TDM systems, but probably not. But the difference is between these, with a native, uh, with a native system, all the processing is done on the computer alone. Now, these days, computers are crazy, crazy powerful. But back in the early 90s, computers were not very powerful. So the computer was mostly used to kind of draw the images on the screen and stuff like that so you could see what you're doing. But people mostly used a TDM or HD system. Now, what the difference is, is that with that one, all the processing is done on DSP chips. So it looked like this kind of a setup right down here. So if we look at this, we had our computer and we had these boxes that were connected to the computer with a cable and these had just more computer chips inside of them called DSP chips, Digital Signal Processing Chips. And 
these chips were specifically de designed uh, to do audio stuff. They were designed by uh, Avid or DigiDesign, whatever the name of the company was at the time. And they did just audio editing stuff. So what this meant was the computer, which back in the 90s was pure, like my phone, my phone was is more powerful by magnitudes uh, than the computers back in the 90s. And so... <clears throat> The computers could not do all the stuff they can do today, so you needed this extra horsepower here, this extra workforce to get the job done better. So Real Studios had the computer was just to see the things, but all the work was actually done on these TSP boxes, and this was called a TDM system. Uh, they were very expensive, though. I mean, they started at like $10,000. When I started using Pro Tools in 1999, uh, or 2000 was when I first got my pro first Pro Tools system. <clears throat> and uh, those those systems cost over $10,000. So it's not something I ever got. I did use them. The good news is it all works about the same. <clears throat> There's a couple of differences, but cosmetically everything works the same. You can go back and forth between the two different systems. It's all designed to work like this. Nowadays, it's called Ultra, and you don't actually need separate DSP boxes anymore. You can do everything right on your computer. You, you need a special key to use it, uh, but you don't actually, it's like an extra um, iLock key. Uh, you, not a physical key, but like a like an internet key or, or a physical key, however you want. Um, and it does do everything on your computer, or you can also use the DSP boxes. They still make those HD systems, or they probably call them ultra systems now. I don't even really follow it much that these days, but computers are so powerful now that we don't really need to worry about those D, uh, those HD systems anymore, the, the extra boxes. They do add some things like you can do a lot more uh, tracks of recording with them. You can have a lot more processing with them. If you need to, you can have um, more recording tracks, more just uh, mixing tracks. But really, honestly, with a home system, with the, the standard Pro Tools system, you can do so much, you don't even need to worry about it. Okay, so uh, that's all this stuff here. <clears throat> let's go on to the next one. Okay, let's go ahead and open up. I got my Pro Tools open here, and we can see that when I open Pro Tools for the first time, and this probably happens with you as well, it's gonna show you this dashboard screen. Over on the left-hand side, there's a couple things here. There's create, there's recent, and there's projects. Now, my computer is an M1 computer. It works really good with Pro Tools, but there's still some weird glitchiness that I think is probably part of Pro Tools, and uh, sorry, probably, probably because of my M1 chip computer, not because of Pro Tools, or maybe there's just something that I'm missing. I don't know, but <clears throat> my recents always start with the like stuff from a long time ago. It's nothing actually really recent. I don't know why that happens. I'm not exactly sure why that's like that. Maybe it's a sign-in thing. Maybe I should sign in. I don't know. Uh, uh, but my recents are actually not that recent. It's kind of annoying. Uh, but the create part here is when you're creating a new session. Recent is when you're doing stuff like whatever you want to work on the last project that you worked on. You got projects here. And then down here, there's a little window that says show on startup. Let's just zoom in on that. Show on startup. This little box here, I usually check that box. I recommend that you check it as well. You don't have to, but I do recommend it. Now, the difference is we've got two different things. We've got, um, you've got your sessions and you've got your projects. The difference between sessions and projects is that a Pro Tools session is local on your computer only. Whereas a Pro Tools project is something that you can work on with other people on the internet. So via the internet, you can work on projects together. In order to use projects, you must be signed in to your Avid account. Uh, let's see here. Tony. Oh, yeah, not all capitals. Let's see here. Uh, boop. Let's see. Does that work? Is that my login? It is my login. Okay. So as you can see, I don't have anything in here. I've never actually used a project. I've never worked on stuff on Pro Tools with people over the internet. Uh, it's I just don't do it. So that that's that's is what that is. Um, but uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna talk about creating a new project from scratch. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this project. We're gonna call this one Pro Tools Introduction. And then I'm going to put your class number in here, 2801, W12. Uh, we don't need all that. We can just do A1. There we go. 2108. 
A1, that's your class name right there. So Perjil's introduction, good. Now we're gonna say, where do I want to store this? Well, I could make it a project. I'm not going to, but that would put it online and it would allow me to collaborate with other people on it. Or we could make it a session, which is just local storage only. We could also create from template. Now a template is basically like a big preset that covers all the bases for stuff. If I'm always working with the same drummer, the same singer, the same whatever, and I wanna pull up a session that has all, uh, uh, certain tracks and it's got certain effects and it's got certain things in it, I can create from template. We are gonna talk about templates a little bit more later, but really they're super easy to kind of figure out and understand what they do. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on templates. But we got here, I'm going to use a local storage session and I'm going to go down here and this stuff here is very important. So really, you need to really write this stuff down. This is the part that you need to write down and let me know if I'm going too fast, please. But take a second. If you don't have your notebook out already, please get your notebook out and let's check this out. File type should be wave. Now the choice is between wave and AIFF. If you run into an older file type, there is a file type called SD2, but nobody uses it anymore. It's called Sound Designer 2 file format. It's from old school Pro Tools days. Uh, if you run into it, Pro Tools can still read it, but you cannot make a new session with SD2. So we've got Wave and we've got AIF. AIF is an Apple thing, Wave is an everyone else thing. So I recommend uh, using uh, wave files, always use wave files just because it's a bit more compatible with the world. AIF does allow you to put like pictures in it and stuff like that, but honestly, we're not trying to put pictures into our audio files. So let's just use AIF, I mean, sorry, let's just use wave because it is more compatible with the rest of the world. So I'm going to select wave here. The sample rate, now we have a couple of choices here. We got 44, 1, 48, 88, 2, 96. And if I had an audio interface connected to it, I would have even more choices here. I do not use higher sample rates. There's not really a big reason to use higher sample rates uh, unless you're doing like, unless you're working with orchestra stuff or you're working on really big high-end projects that they need to make sure we're doing higher sample rates, then you can use them. But here's the thing is that if you're gonna use higher sample rates, and actually just reminded me, I should talk to my friend about this, 44.1 and 88.2 are the ones you're gonna wanna use. These two here, are for uh, digital audio. Digital video, if you're doing stuff for video, then you need to use 48 or 96. If you're doing audio stuff, there's no reason to use 48. Do not use 48. Just don't. Use 44.1 or 88.2. If you wanna get fancy with it, this is not enough to make it actually fancy. It's only gonna get fancy and sound better if you're using 88.2 or even higher, like 196 or something like that, right? So don't worry about these here. Just set it to 44.1 and don't worry about it. Honestly, your audience cannot hear the difference. Nobody can hear the difference at home. I guarantee you nobody listening at home except for a very, very, very select few people can hear the difference and those people unless they know what they're listening for, they're probably lying. But maybe they know what they're listening for. I don't know, it depends. But the sample rate, keep it at 44.1. There's been a whole lot of discussions about this. And at the end of the day, what it comes back to is is 44.1 is fine. Uh, all these other ones here, uh, if, if you're doing 48, if you're using, if you're doing going to video, digital video, if you're doing ADR stuff, or if you're doing Foley work, stuff like that, then use 48. But don't use anything, uh, you know, don't use 48 for audio for just make, if you're just making beats, don't use 48. Okay. Uh, the iOS, uh, sorry, the bit depth over here, this is, let's set this for 24 bits. 32-bit um, float. I actually haven't done enough research and I need to I need to make a note to research about this more to see like what we should be using now. I use 24 bit for everything still. Um, 32 bit. I know that like Ableton Live when it records stuff, uh, when it records stuff like um, when you're bouncing things down, uh, like what's the word I'm looking for? When you're joining things, consolidating stuff like that, I'm pretty sure it does stuff at 32 bit. But um, I have mine set for 24-bit for, for when I bounce stuff out. 
I recommend doing everything at 24-bit. I know CDs are 16-bit. Uh, you probably learned in Mod 1, CDs are 16-bit, 44.1. But who uses CDs anymore at all? Like nobody? Nobody. Yeah, that's right. Nobody. So 24-bit here. Uh, let me see here. That's Lewis is Calco Beater says. He always put the session, you always put the session at um, uh, 44.1. Yep. Yeah. Wave file 44.1. Great. Awesome. And uh, maybe you're using 24-bit as well. Uh, let me know. IO settings. Now this one here is a little bit of a tricky one because last used is the default, but we don't really want to use the default. We want to actually have it set for stereo mix right here. We want to have our IO settings set for stereo mix, not as last used. Uh, the reason why is because if you are using a session that you got from school, like let's say you are working at school and you make a session at school and you bring it home to work at home and then you, um, Oh, uh, Lewis says he keeps going back and forth with 16, but yeah, set it for 24 bit. Don't go back and forth, 24 bit, set it and forget it. Um, so if you have a session that you made at school and you're at mixing that, and then you're saying, you know what? I want to make my own, I want to make a new beat. And you open up a new session and you use last used, it's going to have your IO settings from school because that's the one, uh, yeah, I forgot it. Good, good man. Uh, that's the one you were using last. So we don't want to use last use. We always want to use stereo mix or if you have a specific audio interface and you want to set up your IO settings for that audio interface, I know that who was it who was in class yesterday with me was uh was it maybe AJ and MJ and Joel. I know the three of you were in class yesterday and one of you said you had the um the Apogee uh not the Apogee, sorry, the Apollo Twin. I think it was AJ let me let me know in the comments if that was AJ or comments. Let me know in the chat. Sorry if that was AJ. I've been watching too many YouTube videos. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, AJ says, okay, you have the, the Apollo Twin X. Yeah. So with your Apollo Twin X, you may want to set up an I/O settings for that Apollo Twin X. Uh, and we can, I'm going to show you how to do that in one of these sessions or we can show it in school. Maybe you can even bring yours in because we use Apollo twins at school. You can even bring it in and we can go through how to set it up and then we can export it and you can email it to yourself. So you have it at home, which is pretty cool, right? So you can see down here, there's a lot of different setups here, settings. And this is for like, if you just want your inputs and outputs to come up with names and stuff like that. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you're, if you're just like, whoa, Tony, this is a lot already. I don't really understand any of this stuff. That's okay. Basically, the IO settings are just for if I want to name my inputs and my outputs to different names. If I already have like, if I have a, one of my synthesizers always plugged into input number one, and instead of having Pro Tools say input number one, I want it to say uh, Moog sub 37, right? then I can have it do that and I can just have it always do that. But if you're not sure, set it to stereo mix. Just always leave it set for stereo mix if you don't know what's going on, okay? The next thing that's really, really important is this interleaved button right over here. Um, are we gonna learn this in person as well? No, why would we do that? Why would I teach it twice? I'm, we're not teaching it twice. But having said that, if you, if you want to ask, well, so, okay, so that's a, it's a great question, but um, I, 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 we're not going to go over it twice, but what, what I am going to do, and I, I did mention this in the beginning, I'm sorry, you came in late, so you, you, yeah, because of the whole confusion of where we were meeting today, but uh, what we are going to do is I'm recording all of this, and when once it's recorded, I'm going to put it up on YouTube, so you can watch it later. Um, <clears throat> hold on one second. Sorry, a text just came through. So uh, even though you don't have a computer at the moment, um, you're gonna we're gonna be able to work on this in school, and then uh, you'll be able to do it. Uh, you know, be able to work on it and have the video there. And I'm also gonna be there with you, so you can ask me questions. So if you get lost or whatever, it's okay. But I actually prefer you don't have a computer in front of you right now to be doing this with me because otherwise you're gonna fall behind. Um, I did talk about that already, but I remember that you came in late because of the confusion because you didn't get the email. So totally, uh, totally okay. But um, don't stress it because it is gonna be on YouTube. All right. Cool. So we got this. Uh, uh, we got this interleaved button, and the interleaved button. What this does? Let me go over here. Let's go to the notes. All the stuff that I'm talking about is in the notes. This is what interleave does. Okay. So interleave says if I have uh, a stereo wave file, 
those stereo channels, it's two channels, left and right, those stereo channels, left, is that the right side of the screen? Okay, left and right, the, the stereo channels are going to be in one file. That's what interleaved means. If it is non-interleaved, meaning it's not interleaved, the stereo files, left and right, are going to be two separate audio files that end up on your computer. Okay, They're two separate mono audio files. You can play them. They're still WAV files. You can play them in uh, like Ableton Live or, or, or Logic or, or, or sorry, or iTunes, something like that. The problem is you're only going to be hearing the left side and it's going to be coming right in the middle of your, of your sound. Let me see. I may actually, because huh, I may have deleted all these. I probably deleted these, but last module, uh, a button, it keeps freezing. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do about that, Daquan. Um, last module, does mine keep freezing? Or is it just the Twitch keeps freezing on you? It might be a computer or internet thing. So last module, my, my students turned in some stuff and submissions and some of the no he turned it in correctly a lot of people didn't turn it in correctly for some reason they kind of forgot all this stuff from the beginning and they were only doing mono people were bouncing it out as a mono file and what that meant was i could still hear it but it was like right in the middle of my my thing and when when you have a mono file it has a dot l and dot r here so please be careful about when you're bouncing stuff out or when you're recording stuff, you always, always, always have to push that interleaved button. Look here in my notes. I have it in big green letters underlined with an exclamation point, interleaved. Turn this on. When in, when in doubt, if you have an interleaved button anywhere on your screen, click it, okay? There's only really well, there's more than two places. There's a couple places that interleaved will show up. Always click interleaved. If it's there, always click it. You're not, you can't go wrong with it really. It's, it's not going to mess anything up if you don't click it. If, if it's selected, sorry, it's not going to mess anything up if you click it. If it's selected, uh, it's going to be fine. Um, the only thing that might happen is it might give you too many audio channels, whatever. That's, that's not going to be a problem really. Now, certain things we do want to keep mono like bass and kick drums and stuff like that but if they're stereo if they're like interleaved it's still fine it's not the end of the world whereas if you have a stereo file and you do not um bounce it as an interleaved file it will be the end of the world because you're not going to hear it as stereo you're going to hear it as mono you're going to hear left or right you're not going to hear both sides so keep it uh keep it as a interleaved interleaved always on always always on Daquan says, I don't use Twitch at all. Uh, I know. Twitch is actually cool, though. There's some there's some good stuff on Twitch that's more than just video games. Um, all right. Let's talk a little bit about a plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. we got this Pro Tools introduction, 2101, 2108. Good. All this stuff is good. I'm going to hit Create here. And let's go in here and just take a look at plugins. So when I open it up, here's my Pro Tools screen. I have two windows. I've got my edit window and my mix window, you'll notice that there's nothing on these windows right now. Everything is completely blank and empty. Uh, and that's because we don't have any channels or any tracks set up. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a track here. Command shift in. If you are on a windows machine, it is control shift in. Uh, if you are on a windows machine, let me just say this right now. If you are on a windows machine, please, every time I say command, just switch it to control because I, I don't love having to like, I, I have a Mac. I've had a Mac my whole life. I don't love having to think about windows people. I'm sorry. You're awesome. I'm sure your parents love you. You're great. I would love you if I met you, but I don't want to keep translating and be like command click on a Mac or control click on a window. If I say command click, just control click. Okay. If I say command click, it's control click on a windows machine. All right. So there we go. Cool. All right. So, what I'm going to do, so let me go back one more time and say command shift in, and that will pull up my new tracks. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make two different tracks here. I can click the little plus button right there to make another track. Come on, let's set it up like this. There we go. Cool. My Because I have two monitors, 
my my screen will go one direction it won't go the other direction so here we got this one. i'm going to make this one stereo i'm going to make this one mono so we got this one here we got one mono audio track we got one stereo audio track uh these are going to come in in ticks mode that's fine Let's make another couple of other tracks while we're here, shall we? So I'm going to go ahead and click this little plus button, and I'm going to make a mono aux track. I'm going to make a stereo. Am I going to crash things? Okay. I'm going to make a stereo aux track, and we're going to make one more. We're going to make a stereo master fader. Uh, what is ticks mode? Don't worry about ticks mode right now. If I make an instrument track here, let's make a stereo instrument track. You'll notice that the stereo instrument track uh, here, actually, sorry. You know what? By default, yours should say samples. I've got mine. I've got a setting on mine set change. It should say sample, sample, samples, and ticks. Don't worry about it, though. The default is, is fine for now, for today. Uh, the default is fine. Once we start talking about this, then we're going to have to deal with it. But for the for the moment, let's not worry about samples versus ticks. It's just a thing that's here. I don't even I'm I'm sorry you're even looking at it right now. I wish it wasn't here on the screen. <laughs> all right. So we have all these different tracks that I've just made. I've made a couple of audio tracks. Uh, let me just name this one audio mono. And this one is going to be audio stereo. And I'm just going to go down here and name this one. Oh, this one should be an audio tra aux track as well. There we go. This one should be aux mono. And this one here will be aux stereo and you don't have to name these if you don't want it's totally fine this is a master and this is an instrument track here so i'm going to hit create watch what happens when i hit create it's going to create all of these tracks for me oh it's doing it in narrow mix mode there we go boom so now i've got all of these tracks here so it just created all of these tracks here and if i go back to my other window this is my mix window if i go back to my uh edit window here you can see I've got tracks in here. So I've got my two different windows here. Bibbity boppity boom. There we go. Now, before we continue on that path, talking about different tracks and stuff like that, I do want to take a moment to talk about plugins because plugins are very, very, very important. We're going to be talking about plugins this whole time. So I do want to just pause on the track creation and talking about different tracks. And let's talk about plugins here for a second. All right, so plugins uh, come up here in the top section on this inserts part. The inserts is where you put your plugins. It doesn't matter where you, what track you've got. If it has inserts, these, if it, if you, if the track can use plugins, it's going to be in the inserts section. So I've got my, uh, <clears throat> I've got couple of audio tracks here. I've got a couple of aux tracks here. I've got a master track. I've got an instrument track. They've all got places to put plugins. But what is a plugin? What's a plugin? Okay. Well, here's what a plugin is. A plugin is a program within a program. And there are two types of plugins. Remember, I did mention plugins earlier when we were talking about the beginning of Pro Tools and all this stuff. Um, <clears throat> Avid, when they were first creating uh, Pro Tools, they made their own uh, plugins. They made like, there's an EQ and there's a compressor and there's like a reverb, stuff like that. But then they opened it up so other people could make these plugins. And what these are is these are programs within a program. So Pro Tools right here, this little beautiful picture that I've got, Pro Tools is the program. And then inside of it, I've got compressors and EQs and samplers and synthesizers and all this stuff. These are other programs that run inside of this shell program. So all these other programs run inside of Pro Tools. <clears throat> and <clears throat> there are basically two types of plugins. There are effects plugins and there are instrument plugins. And the, the basic way to tell these apart is that an effect plugin changes a sound that already exists like if i have a recording of drums or somebody singing or something like that an effect is going to change that sound an instrument is going to make a sound from scratch it's going to create a sound okay <clears throat> there are native plugins that come with the program like eqs and stuff like that then there are third-party plugins that are made by other companies okay that's how that works then finally, the last part we need to know about plugins is there are different plugin formats 
Really, for now, you don't need to worry about that because Pro Tools only uses AAX plugins, the one down here on the bottom. <clears throat> AAX is a format made by Avid and it's used, uh, only Pro Tools uses AAX plugins. Audio Units is a plugin format made by Apple and it can be used by Logic or Live. If you are using Ableton Live though, I recommend that you use the VST versions of plugins because they seem to be more stable. These VST plugins uh, seem to be more stable than the Audio Units plugins. If you use Logic, you can only use Audio Units. If you use Live, you can use both, Audio Units or VSTs. If you are on a Windows machine, the main one is VSTs. Uh, there used to be another one, or there still is another one. I think they discontinued it, but there was another one uh, that people didn't really use that much. But in the world of, um, of, uh, of Windows, it's mostly VSTs. You do not have audio units, uh, but you do have AAX. It's, it's, it's AAX and VSTs, but you do not have audio units if you're on a Windows machine. So if you're on Windows, just forget about this audio units thing. Forget about Logic, all that stuff, because Logic is an Apple program now, so you don't even have access to it. Okay, so let's just, let's just take one more look at these, like what I mean by this stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to hide these tracks here. So we're not seeing these. I'm going to put my instrument right here. And I got my mono audio track. I got my instrument track and I got my master fader. Now, every single session should have a master fader. We'll come back and talk about that. They should always be stereo. Again, we're going to talk about that later. I just want to show you the difference between the two different types of effects. So for example, if I go ahead and record my voice real quick, <clears throat> got my external microphone here. Let's go ahead and mute this. Check one, two, check, 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 check. Hey, okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little recording here. Oh, let's see here. Let's do this, this, this. Cool. Hi, my name is Tony, and this is what my voice sounds like through an effect. Why is that so? Oh, I, I know why that is. Okay, there we go. That looked like it was clipping. I was like, what is going on there? Why are you clipping? But you weren't clipping. You were just looking like you were clipping. Let's go ahead and listen to that real quick. Hi, my name is Tony. Sounds great, doesn't it? Why do you, why am I not hearing anything? Hold on a second. Let's go over here to setup, playback engine, Pro Tools aggregate. Yeah, you're fine. Why, what's, what is? Hi, my name is, y'all can hear it. I cannot hear it. Hold on a second. Oh, I know why I can't hear it. Let's see here, bup, bup, bup. External headphones. There we go. Hi, my name is Tony, and this is what my voice sounds like through an effect. Why is that so? Okay, <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this right here, boom. Hi, my name is Tony, and this is what my voice sounds like through an effect. Awesome, cool. I'm gonna turn off my loop so it's not looping it. Turn that off, uh, right click to turn that off, boom. Okay, so I got this here. Hi, my name is Tony, and let's go ahead and put an effect on this. That's just the dry voice. Right now there's no effect on it, and I'm just gonna go over here and go to EQ and let's put a uh, let's put a little distortion on there, shall we? Let's go to harmonics. Let's get an air distortion in here and just put this on here. Boom. Now, hi, my name is Tony, and this is what my voice sounds like through an effect. Cool. Hi, my name is Tony, and this is what that's that's an effect. That's an effect plugin. It changed the sound of my voice, so now we have a different sound of my voice. And we can have all kinds of different plugins. If you look at my list of plugins here, it's pretty insane. I've got plugins from all these different companies down here, all these different types of plugins. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up here in just a moment. But all these different types of plugins, and some of these are effects, some of them are instruments. You just, you have to know which is which. It's not actually that hard because, uh, because you kind of, you should know which effects you're downloading and which effects you're buying. T says, how do you know if your master is stereo? We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna come back and talk about tracks in just a moment, okay? Uh, but before we do that, I just wanna finish talking about these uh, effect, the plugins real quick. So that's an, an example of, of an effect plugin. Let's go ahead and put in here a, um, an instrument plugin. And an instrument plugin, remember, uh, that allows us to, uh, let me just set this up. There we go. Boom. That allows us to make sounds happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here to this first one here and I'm going to go to instrument. This is an instrument track. I'm going to go to instrument and I'm going to put the boom on here. The boom 
is uh, not going to play correctly because I do not have my hard drive connected. Hold on one second. Yes, I know. I know, I know, I know. Hold on. Hold on let me connect my hard drive. Oh, it's also not going to play correctly because my... Hold on one second. Let me go ahead and plug this in. Oop, there we go. Solid state drive. Solid state drives are magical. I absolutely love my solid state drives. Okay, there we go. Zaphod. Okay. So I'm going to pull up Boom. I'm going to have to re I'm going to have to search for that real quick. But it's not that big a deal cuz I think it's on here. Oh, you know what? It actually might not even be on here. Let's see. Let's go to browse. John Holmes Boom. Are you even in here? Zaphod. Let's do a search for Boom. Boom. Name matches Boom. Boom, boom, boom. I don't think I have... Ah, okay, I can't use that one. Sorry, here, I'm gonna have to use a different plugin. I, th I thought I could use that one. Let me go ahead and not use that. Uh, I thought I could use it because I have, uh, I, 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 so y'all could see it, but I'm gonna just use battery. Let's see here, battery, 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 there you go. So battery is a third party one. Boom actually comes with Pro Tools. Battery is third party. Uh, it's a native instruments one. And yes, you can, yeah, you can, you can do all that. Why are you asking me? Battery comes with complete. It's a really, um, it's a really cool collection of 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 uh, plugins and instruments and stuff like that. I highly recommend that if you're just kind of starting off and you're trying to figure out what to buy first as far as new instruments, new effects, stuff like that. I would recommend recommend going with complete from Native Instruments. It's a good starting point. It's just got a ton of stuff in there. It's a bit expensive. It is uh, like six hundred dollars. I I feel like for the initial uh, thing, but once you get into their ecosystem. Uh, it's actually really, really cool. And we can talk about that later on. Why are you taking so long, Pro Tools? Oh my goodness, this is, this is nuts. Um, while it's doing that, let me, let me see. Can I, can I flip this? I probably can't even do anything more on here. <clears throat> well, while it's doing that, let's take a look over here at our notes. Get out of here. Go over to the side of the screen. And take a look at a couple of these things here. So the different track types is uh, my different track types I've got here, we can see when I'm creating different tracks, we can see this is an audio track, an aux track, uh, this is the master track, a little sigma symbol, VCA track, which we're not really gonna talk about uh, this module, and the MIDI tracks and an instrument track. They have these symbols on here, so that's a quick way that you can see what kind of a uh, track it is that you're working with. You've got the uh, audio little waveform here. Aux is a little arrow pointing down. The Sigma symbol is the master track. The VCA has little faders on it. The MIDI has a little MIDI interface cable thing. And the instrument has a little keyboard on it. So if you're wondering about how to tell what your track types are, you can tell by that. Um, T did ask earlier, how can we tell if it's mono or stereo? Well, any audio track, any kind of track that passes audio through or anything like that, if it's mono, it's gonna have one uh, one one um, level meter here, and if it's stereo, it's gonna have two meters. See, so this master fader here has two meters. But also, when in doubt, create a new a new uh, thing. Why are you not? Okay, hold on. Let me restart my Pro Tools. Come on, come on, Pro Tools. Force quit. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. I don't want to wait for you, but I believe in you. Oh, you're going to be on my screen now all the time? Ugh, oh, gross. Okay, that happens sometimes. That's that's an M1 thing. Um, and how do you create a master in stereo? Oh, well, it's the same way you create all of them. Is you just uh, you just click stereo. It's just right there when you when you do it. Just click stereo. Why is my loopback still open? There we go. Close you. 
So let's go ahead and see Pro Tools opening up again. I'm just gonna tuck this little warning window down here on the side. This is something that's only I've only seen this happen on M1 computers. So if it happens, you just restart your computer. I'm not gonna restart my computer because, uh, because uh, we're I'm I'm broadcasting on Twitch and so I don't I don't want to restart it. Now this leads us to an interesting thing though. We can use this as a learning point here. Let's just go over here to our Pro Tools folder structure and take a look at our Pro Tools folder structure. We're doing things a little bit out of order, but I'm just gonna utilize this kind of like uh, mess up here to my advantage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my Pro Tools area. Where is it? It's under, uh, bu 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 I think I put it in sound and then Pro Tools projects. There it is, Pro Tools projects right there, boom. And this is the one I just did. Now, <clears throat> Take a look at these notes. Let's look at this notes very carefully. This box here around everything is a big giant folder. This box that's here represents this folder right here. So if I double click on this, we're gonna see some things in here because I've already done some recording and stuff. We're gonna see some things in here that match what is over here. Let me just move this over here on the side. There we go. And I'm gonna get rid of my, hold on hide my sidebar there we go hide sidebar boom command option s cool so i've got over here i've got my different uh files and let me just hold on let me just make this there we go we're gonna do it like this move that over like that cool okay so the folder that we're seeing here that says pro tool session folder is this one right here and if i open this one now I can see all of these different files that are inside of here. What I wanna do right now is I'm actually gonna go and grab a backup file so we still have the recording that I made and some other stuff because I wanna show you all that stuff a little bit later. So I don't wanna start with the same file from scratch and I couldn't save it before it crashed on me, right? So I'm gonna use my file backups over here to access that. But before we do, let's just take a look at some of these things that are in here. So first of all, what I've got in here is this PTX file. The PTX file is my Pro Tools session file. X stands for, I don't know what X stands for, PTX. They, they brought it out with, when it was Pro Tools 10. Uh, so yeah, I guess maybe that was what the X was for. It was back when like, you know, well actually it was before, it was a long time ago, but I'm not sure what the X is for, but the PT part stands for Pro Tools. Anyway, this is your main session file. Don't delete this. That's your main session file. The other thing you should not delete is your session file backups. Now, if I drop this down so we can look inside this folder, we can see here it's got it every uh, three minutes, it saves a backup of my session. So the latest backup here is at 1035. So this one should have all the recordings and stuff I did on it. Now, you're saving, you can change the, the amount of time between saves. I usually have mine set for three minutes, uh, but I think the default is like five minutes. So even if everything crashes, you're not that far behind stuff, okay? So you saw my Pro Tools just crashed, but and I hadn't saved it yet. So all that recording, all that beautiful recording I did, all those plugins that I put on stuff um, sh would be gone if I didn't have these backups. So the backups are really, really useful. So do not delete this backups folder here. The wave cache, this one right here, you can delete that. It doesn't matter. It, it will redraw the wave forms. What this is, is so Pro Tools can work faster. It puts, uh, it caches the waveforms, which basically means it puts the waveforms in a way that it can easily redraw them and see them. Realistically, modern computers do not need this. This is like a holdover from old, old, old computers. Uh, the other stuff that we have in here is an audio files folder. Now you can see over here on my on my little in, in the notes, I've got green asterisks next to these. That means do not trash these. Whatever you do, do not delete your audio files folder. I'm gonna put a question out there, and I'm gonna keep talking, and somebody please answer this question for me. Uh, why should we not delete the audio files folder? Why should we not delete the audio files folder? So I'm gonna keep talking here for a second and please put the answer in. Uh, it's gonna take a second to show up though, probably. Bounced files folder, also do not delete these for basically the same reason why you shouldn't delete the audio files folder. But for right now, you can see my bounced files does not have anything in it. It is an empty file. 
<clears throat> and then the audio files folder does have something in it. And then uh, Aaron says, uh, why should we not delete this? Because, because then there won't be any audio in your session. Yes. High five, Aaron. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, absolutely. T says the same thing. Boom. AJ says, because when you reopen the audio session, you're, we'll have, uh, y'all, y'all are amazing. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. High fives down the line. I love it. Okay. Y'all are absolutely right. If you delete this audio files folder, it's going to erase your audio files. So if you've done recording of stuff, you can, yeah, you would have to start over. Absolutely. Okay. It, we could arguably say that the audio files folder is more important than the Pro Tools session folder. Now, do not delete your Pro Tools session file. Sorry, I said folder. I meant file. Do not delete the Pro Tools session file. Uh, but if you're recording a band and you're recording like a live session and you just have all these tracks in there and you hit record on all the tracks and it records and the band plays, you don't really need the Pro Tools session file. It's nice to have, but you have all those audio files of everything that's been recorded. You can open those up in any DAW. You can open them in Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton Live, uh, Cubase, uh, Studio One, whatever. If you're doing a lot of MIDI work though, you definitely, definitely need this Pro Tools session file. So don't delete it, but the audio files are probably more important depending on what you're doing, okay? Other stuff we have is clip groups, and then we've got uh, video files. Uh, I Don't delete those two, I guess, I don't know. Don't delete it any, anything, but especially, especially, do not delete these ones with the green asterisk next to them. Now, everything that's below this pink line here will only exist if there's actually something in it, although that seems to be a lie now because there's clip groups stuff and made that, but, but that might be because uh, I, it crashed. I'm not sure. So let's go ahead and do this. I, I restarted my Pro Tools. My Pro Tools is on. I'm not going to open up this original session. If I open up the original session, let's just open it up and see what happens. If I open it up, it's back to the beginning and I would have to record my beautiful vocals and all that stuff, right? So we don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm not going to save it. <clears throat> oh, and everything disappeared because now Pro Tools has not been crashed. Okay, cool. So all the stuff that was there before is, is gone. But my audio files is still here because there's something in the audio files. And then my session file backups is still here. This is the one we want to actually open up is this one that was at 1035. So let's go ahead. And I can see my time over here. Also, quick by the way, always have your computer in list mode. Do not use your computer in goofy... Uh, icons mode like that's this is dumb don't do it don't do it don't please please don't do it please don't do it. let me let me say it one more time don't do it okay don't do it all right let's do this right here boom okay yeah just don't do it just don't do it okay so we're gonna do this here what about columns well these are columns i mean they're in columns right column 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 these are columns so list is columns uh aj uh, columns is great. Columns, I highly recommend columns. See, list, list, list. There's no actual... Oh, columns? Oh, wait. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, whatever. If you want to. I, I use my stuff in list mode. Uh, it's a little bit different than columns. It depends on how you want to work. I don't have any problem with columns. I'm not going to, like, make fun of you. Uh, if you use columns, if you use, if you use icons, I'm going to make fun of you. I'm going to call you out. No, I'm, I'm not. I, I might, actually, because I'm me. But, uh, <laughs> so... Uh, anyway, list mode is my favorite, but column is just a, a works. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Just avoid column, avoid, avoid icons. Yes. All right. So here's the last one I did. I can see it's the last one because it's 1035. Here we go. Boom. Open this up. Let's see. Are my beautiful vocals here? Yes. Oh, look, and this is here too. <laughs> that warning sign is there. Good. Get out of here. Boom. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So it's, it's, well, it's actually not here, but it's still in the session. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna oh, get out of here. Go, go, oh, go on that screen. Good. Okay, cool. Uh, it's still in the session because I had deleted it out of here, but here it is over here and I could drag it in and we could listen to it again. Oh, look at you. You're so cute. Boom. Look, it thinks it's people's. There we go. Boom. There we go. Hi, my name is Tony and this is what my voice sounds like through an effect. Hi.
Awesome. Yes. Okay, cool. So we got that. I'm going to delete it again because why not? So it's all there. Yay, we're good. Now, you'll see that when you do that, it does say recovered right here. This says recovered. What you do is you just hit Command S to save. Control S if you're on a Windows machine. I'm not going to keep telling you. All right. And then you just get rid of this recovered here. We're going to call this one like this. Get rid of that. I'm going to call this one dash O2 because it's like a second one, right? Boom. There we go. Now we're good to go. I kept my original one. I did not overwrite my original one. I've got the second one here. I think we should be good. Um, yeah, that's what's up. I also, I, I'm also noticing there's 27 people in here watching this. If you want to say hello, please say hello. I love it when people ask questions because it does help us get into things. If it's a question that's completely off topic, I'm going to say that I'm not going to answer that. But um, if it's with the topic and stuff, yeah, feel free to chime in. Um, all right. So. Let's check this. Let's go back to our notes here. And since we're here, let's just, let's, uh, let's actually come back to that. Let's go back over here to our, uh, b -b plugins. And I, I was trying to show you this drum thing. Let's see. Let's do it one more time. Instrument battery four. Let's see. Are we going to get this pinwheel of death again? I bet we are. You know what? We might not be able to do any uh, any battery stuff. Why are you not working? Why are you not working? Yeah. Ah, so annoying. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you right now. Why are you not working? Okay. Well, so okay, we're gonna restart this one more time, and we're not gonna we're not gonna use um we're not gonna use uh battery. <laughs> because apparently battery and Pro Tools are not friends. Uh, probably it's just my computer because it is an M1 Mac. I'm going to check it out later on and see what's going on. Um, I don't know why that's happening. Uh, there's another. There's some other programs we can launch. I just wanted to get drums. I just wanted drums. Is that so wrong to want drums? Should I not want drums? Is, that what's, is, this, is this what the world is telling me right now? The world is telling me, Tony, no drums. Fine, fine. That's cool. Uh, maybe I got multiple processes going on. I mean, I do. I have so many processes going on right now. I have, I have, I have, I'm recording. First of all, I'm broadcasting. Second of all, I'm recording. Third of all, I'm trying to start up Pro Tools. But that should not be the problem. I should, I should be able to do this. Uh, all right, so we're just going to load this one up because I hadn't done anything new. Um, <clears throat> that should not, they want me to physically play the drums. I could do that. I could do that. I'm not going to, but I could. I could. I got skills. I got skills. What? What? Okay. Let's use instead of b battery. <laughs> bang it! Bang it! Bang it! Um. Let's use vacuum. Vacuum is a, a one that it's from Air actually, but it does come with Pro Tools. So here we go. Here's my battery. Yay! It works. Cool. 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 Now there is a new feature here. I've actually never used this feature. MIDI keyboard. I did hear about this though. Ooh. Awesome. Cool. So now there's this new feature called MIDI keyboard. Does it have a link? Does it have a, a shortcut? Oh, shift K. Why, why did that happen? Awesome. Cool. So shift K is your MIDI keyboard. It's cool that it pulls it up and it, you can go octave up and down. I actually really like this. I like it better than the uh, Ableton Live one. Um, but yeah, so this is cool. Yeah, I also have a physical one. I don't have it hooked up though. But this is cool because, so first of all, Pro Tools is really late to this game. This is something that um, Logic has had forever. Ableton Live has had forever. Ableton Live, I think, was the first one to do it. And then Logic followed suit. But I could be backwards about that. I'm not sure. Um, but then Pro Tools never had it. Like the workaround was some crazy thing you had to do. And you could get it to work, but it was really more trouble than it was worth. They literally just added this keyboard with this latest version of Pro Tools that just came out or the one right before it. Like either the one in March or the one in June, I forget. But basically Pro Tools releases a new release like every three months or so. And this one or the one before was like the latest version. So... Oh, Oxide says, uh, you've been having drums as well. Uh, what is it, Oxide? Oxide, right? You've been having drum problems with drums. It might be a conspiracy. It might be a conspiracy. Anybody who's uh, with QAnon, please check it out 
and let us know if that's actually a conspiracy that we need to worry about. All right, cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play a couple things here. While I'm playing, I'm just gonna, not that, I'm gonna do this one. There we go, low pass filter, high pass filter. Yeah. Cool, I'm gonna put it down in my octave. There we go. <sighs> yeah, this is great for yeah, when you're on the go and you just wanna you just wanna make a beat. Absolutely. I love it. Cool, so we got this here. Let's go ahead and crank up the saturation. Put some dust in there. Cool, cool, cool. So what I can do here is let's go ahead and just record something real quick. I'm just really just showing you plugins here. I'm just gonna create a click track. Create a click track, boom, we got our click track here. Let's go ahead and turn that down a little bit, boom. And we're gonna go ahead and let's slow it down. Where's my, there's this, let's slow it down, slow you down, there we go, cool. All right, let's record something here. No tracks are record enabled. Let's make a track record enabled. There we go, instrument one, boom. I'm gonna do that and we'll go. Awesome, so we got that there. And this is just, just a little recording that I just did. Boom, 16th notes, yeah, cool, sounds good. Boom, there we go. And now I got a little bass line, yay. Envelope one, two, cool. Let's go ahead, pull that up. What is this envelope one? Okay, yeah, cool. Nice, there we go. Oh, it's I was doing the wrong thing here. There we go. Cool. Now we got a little thing here, right? But that's the big difference. Are we crashing again? Are we, cr okay, no, we're not crashing. Okay, cool. All right, so that's the big difference between an effect and an instrument. An instrument actually allows me to make music. That was a really long explanation, right? An effect, an instrument allows me to actually make music and I can now put this effect over here onto the instrument track. Cool. There we go. I can dial it in, right? Okay. And that's and that's actually using both of these together. We've got our we've got an effect plugin, we've got an instrument plugin, and if we could, we could put a drum instrument plugin on there as well, but we can't really do that. So this is like this is what the different plugin types are. And there's a ton of plugins, but they all fall into these two categories. They all fall into effects, which are all of these right here or instruments, which are all of these right in here. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of instruments uh, that I've collected over the years. I've been doing this for a very long time. I've got lots of nice connections in the industry. And uh, so I get lots of stuff and I buy lots of stuff. I just, I love, ooh, we've got drum computer. We could try that one. We're not going to though, because I'm sick of Pro Tools crashing. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, when we're done on here, I'm gonna go through and, and check that out and see what's going on. But basically that's these two things here, cool. All right, so those those different plugins and what they do. All right, so going back over here to our basics, Pro Tools has two main windows. We've got the edit window and we've got the mix window. So this is the edit window here. This is the mix window here. Let's go back and show our tracks uh, over here in the upper left-hand corner in both windows. Here's our track list here. We can see our different tracks that are in here and we can go through these and see uh, we can't see if they're, uh, we can we can show them or we can hide them. See this little button right over here on the side. If uh, if the button is uh, dark, it means it's 
shown and if it's light it means it's hidden if we click on it we can select it and right here we've got our little symbols these little symbols show us what kind of a track it is okay so the question is how do you pull up the mix window they pull up the mix window by hitting command equals or if you're on a windows machine what is it somebody tell me if you're on a windows machine it's not command but it is what on a windows machine on a mac it's command equals on a windows machine it's going to be what Okay, so uh, while you're answering that question, um, yeah, thank you and control. Good. Okay, cool. Yep, control. It is control on a Windows machine. Okay, so Mac is command, Windows is control. Now, down here, how can we see if things are uh, stereo versus mono? And actually, going back to T's uh, question, how do we create a master uh, a stereo track that's master? Well, command shift in to pull up our new tracks. If you want to do it without the command key, go over here to track new right there under track new i'm going to show i'm going to tell you all the uh, the shortcuts for everything but this is track new boom and then here is where we do it right here where it says mono change that to stereo and then change this to uh, master fader and you're good to go boom there we go and now i have two stereo master faders i don't need to i'm going to delete this one this brings us to an interesting point how do we delete tracks in Pro Tools, if you click on a track and you hit delete, nothing happens. If, can you hit Command Delete? Can you hit Command Shift Delete or? No, okay. So how do we delete a track? Well, you can go over here to your window and select Delete or you can right click on it and you can go down here and go to Delete. Boom. You gotta right click and delete it. Actually, I have this uh, editor thing where I can actually edit things like this and to delete stuff I could actually set up a new macro in here let's make a new track called uh, Pro Tools available in Pro Tools <clears throat> Pro Tools there we go boom that's it good cool and in here, I can actually make a macro to, huh, I'll do that later. But I can make something to actually make a shortcut to trigger my uh, delete, to delete a track, which is would be awesome because it's a, it's a thing up here. So, but the only way you can do it, if you don't have something like that, and that's a great program, by the way, but if you don't have something like that, then what you need to do is you need to right click on the track and go to delete and do delete right there. Okay. So let's take a look at these real quick. There's a couple ways we can tell if these are mono or stereo, and, it, and it's the same for all the different tracks. The reason why I made so many different track types is because I wanted to show you this example here of creating mono versus stereo. So if it is a mono track, it's got one meter, which I told you before, but it also only has one pan pot. So this one here is a mono track right here. This one here is a stereo track. It's got two, mono, stereo, stereo, and this one's a stereo, how can we tell if it's stereo? It doesn't have any pan pots because it's just going to the outside world. Uh, well, it can it's stereo because it's got these double uh, meters here. But in general, yeah, two bars versus one bar, one bar, st mono, stereo, 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 mono, mono, or one or two pan pots, okay? So we got that there. Absolutely, Lewis, awesome. And then over here, in this window here, how can we tell if it's mono? Well. This mono audio file that I recorded earlier, right here. See how it's just one line, like like right, like 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 this. If I go ahead and record, let me go ahead and record my bass line into this audio channel here. I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna grab the. Uh, let's see here, and ba -ba -ba, let's just send this over to the track. Audio stereo, boom. There we go. I'm gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this one bass bounce bounce for I'm bouncing the audio to uh, I'm bouncing the uh, track out to audio I'm just gonna go ahead and hit um, you know this and this record and I'm just gonna go ahead and record this Hi, my name is Tony and why did that not record anything oh it's because this is hold on a second I'm gonna turn this up to pre and hit that there we go let's see cool so I'm gonna go ahead and Record this, mute this.
Awesome, okay? So now I've got this baseline recorded here. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Interesting, how do I do it for just the selected track? I am not sure, because it's doing all my tracks at once. Eh, that's annoying. Okay, anyway, I, I you can see here's my bass part, and let me just show you, the reason why I'm looking at this is because this one here is my audio, my 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 vocal recording that I did, which is mono, and this one here is my bass line I recorded, which is stereo. The difference is between these, as you can plainly see on the screen, is that this one mono one only has one uh, one little waveform, and this one here that's stereo has two little waveforms. And if I make everything smaller, it stays like that, two and one. Go all the way down, two and one. If I go to micro, yep, same thing, two and one, two and one, two and one. So on the edit window, it's also very easy to see what's going on. If it's a stereo track, it's going to have uh, two um, two waveforms. If it's a mono track, it's going to have one waveform. And then over here on the left hand side, we've got again two pan pots and versus one pan pot. And again, one. Uh, for stereo tracks, we have two meters versus one meter there. So you can see everything still goes in the same way. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. It's 11 o'clock, it's 11.05 actually. Let's take a break. I'm not gonna restart my machine. So what I do during the breaks is I just leave, um, uh, I just leave Twitch running with the pandas and some music so you can chill, whatever. Uh, I don't need you to sign in and sign out right now. When we leave Twitch, that's when you're gonna sign out. Okay. When we leave Twitch and we go to Zoom, you're going to sign out from Twitch and you're going to sign in to um, Zoom when we go over there. Okay. But right now, you do not need to sign in and out after the break. Okay. So it's 11.05. Uh, be back at 11.15. All right. Take 10 minutes and let's do a little 10 minute break. All right. Cool. So I will see y'all. I'll see y'all in a bit. Cool. 